Hello, everyone. Welcome to our program. This is uh, Dr. Roberto Miranda for Covenant for New England. And uh, today we have a very exciting guest, Dr. Michael Lindsay, eighth uh, president of Gordon College. And we welcome you, Michael, to our studio. Thank you for being here. And I'm looking forward to a great uh, conversation and uh, for you, hopefully, to uh, be uh, seen and known by a lot of other evangelicals here in the New England area, those who probably don't know you. I'm sure it's a very small minority at this point. But we're excited uh, to have you as uh, Gordon's uh, new president. I myself, as you know, I'm a member of the board, and I've had already the privilege of seeing your work and your style of leadership, and I'm truly very, very uh, admiring of the, th the way you are conducting your uh, presidency at this point. You've been in the presidency now for about a year, no? That's right. I just realized that you were um, inaugurated in September. September So you're pretty much one year this time That's right. into your presidency. Um, any reality checks? I think when leaders go into a position such as the one that you're occupying now, they uh, come with all kinds of expectations and agendas and things that they want to do, and that's a natural thing to happen. And then, of course, you confront the reality of uh, leadership in that particular context, and you realize that maybe some things are new and different than you expected. Any particular things that have struck you as uh, different than what you expected? Well, first, let me just say thank you so much for having me on. I'm delighted to be here and uh, so grateful for your leadership, Roberto, and thank you. what you thank do you. Uh, in the church, in our community, and at Gordon. And thank you for serving uh, as a trustee of Gordon College. Well, it's my, my privilege. I think I have the highest regard for Gordon as an institution, and it's just been a wonderful, illuminating experience for me as well. Well, uh, so I've learned a lot over the last year. Um, I think that the thing that I've, I've come to appreciate the most are the people of Gordon and uh, the community uh, on our campus. It's a, it's a beautiful campus on the North Shore of Boston, and uh, I love having a chance to get to know our students. I've had occasions to, to be up close with a few students who've worked directly in my office or that we've been able to work together on some projects, and that's been a lot of fun. Reality check. Uh, well, if winter last year is any, any indication of the coming winter, I'm in great shape. Don't count on it. Yeah, that was great. Uh, four <laughs> inches of wonderful. snow for the whole entire winter months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was recruited the year before uh, when you had a pretty heavy snowfall. So I guess I'm, yeah. I'm gearing up for winter weather. I'm originally from Jackson, Mississippi. So uh, driving in the snow and ice is something that doesn't come naturally for me. Yeah. But uh, really, it's, it's, it's all been good. We really feel greatly blessed. My wife and our kids live on the campus, and uh, we, we love the community that we're a part of. Really excited about what God is doing through Gordon. Um, it's, it's a very exciting place to be if you're in higher education. Boston is the global mm -hmm. capital of higher education. It's home to more college students per capita than any other city on the planet home to more institutions of higher learning than any other place in the world. And for Gordon to be in that environment and to be a, uh, a vibrant Christian community in that context is really exciting. Yeah, how, how do you propose to um, take uh, more advantage of that uh, connection? You have often alluded to the fact that Gordon is uh, kind of in the center of a lot of other places of influence. I mean, we're close to Washington, yes. New York. You have Harvard University. You have all the, the medical centers in this area as well. Yeah. Do you feel that there's still room to kind of uh, explore for greater connections, uh, greater, taking more advantage of those resources that are so available to, to Gordon right now? Absolutely. This is a, an important uh, global city and it's a place where there's lots of opportunity for our students. One of the things that we're really focused on is creating internship opportunities for our students both during the academic year and during the summer. We're looking for research collaborations with partner institutions. So our faculty doing research with colleagues at MIT, at Harvard, uh, BU, BC. These are all great places where there's good things that are going on. And uh, increasingly, the lines between institutions are blurred in the world of the modern academy. Mm -hmm. So Gordon is uniquely primed to be a Christian influence in that environment. And I think it, it creates a lot of uh, potential for good. Yeah. Many people say if, if any institution has the chance to shape the world of ideas for greater Christian influence, it's actually a school like Gordon, which is located so close to so many prominent institutions that set the, the, the global agenda for higher education. And so it's a great privilege and a great opportunity for us. Yeah, I, I would suspect that a lot of these uh, secular institutions like Harvard and uh, Boston University and so on, they might uh, see with a certain amount of and I'm, I'm speaking in broad terms, a certain amount of, not suspicion, but, mm -hmm. uh, but perhaps uh, 
a bit of skepticism about the capacity for a Christian college and, and that an evangelical college at that hmm. that takes its faith extremely seriously and biblical worldview very seriously to be able to engage in really serious intellectual inquiry and to be able to produce like really high caliber uh, students and an intellectual process. Um, have you found that at all in your initial connections with uh, these uh, institutions or any, any thoughts on that? There's a real generational divide. So I find folks who um, are in their 60s, 70s or 80s in the academy, they, they came of age in their intellectual life where there was a real deep suspicion that people of faith could actually do high level scholarship. And so there is resistance among those folks and they, they, don't, they think that our faith is a real impediment to what we are doing. But younger uh, generation of scholars, which are folks in their 50s, 40s, 30s, they have seen how individual identities actually can really shape the horizons of somebody's research. So just as we recognize that uh, women have brought great contributions to scholarly research because of their identity as women into the work that they're doing. Whether they study feminist subjects or not, they actually make mm -hmm. real contributions. So in the same way, people of faith have been given, I'd say, additional latitude uh, to bring their faith convictions to bear. Somebody like Francis Collins, who is the, the director of the National Institutes of Health now in Washington, app uh, appointed by President Obama. Mm -hmm. Before mm -hmm. that, he led the five research teams that mapped the human genome in 2000, the most significant scientific discovery of our lifetime. And he's a committed Christian and has written about how his faith actually called him to those deeper questions of understanding the human genome. Because of pioneers like Francis Collins, who incidentally is uh, very close to Gordon College, he spoke at the dedication of the, the, our new science building, which is uh, a vibrant place of intellectual discovery. Because of those kinds of individuals, I think that we have more opportunity today than we did even mm. five or 10 years ago. So there is some suspicion that yeah. that's true, but I think there's a lot more opportunity. And yet here, uh, using that example of uh, Collins um, as a, as a uh, really an illustration of the, the tensions that are inherent in this kind of uh, meeting of uh, two worlds. Um, That's right. His uh, deep, deep work into the human genome and, and uh, uh, biology and evolution and so on, I think a lot of evangelicals would, would uh, in inquiring further about the true nature of his faith, his evangelical faith, yeah. might question uh, some of his views on uh, creation, for example, uh -huh. and, uh, and the evolution of the human being and so right. on, because I think that he takes a bit of a, a different uh, perspective yeah. on uh, an issue such as evolution and creationism, for example, yes. right. so that um, some might not consider it orthodox. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that also shows a bit the, the inherent tensions mm -hmm. when you enter into those worlds, in particular, I think, in, in the area of evolution, which I think is one of those defining uh, lines uh, in you know Christianity and, and science and so on and so forth, just like perhaps uh, you know s psychoanalysis and all, and, uh, all kinds of all those kinds of uh, areas of uh, learning. Um, you know, I, I, I think that still some evangelicals would think, well, you know, uh, that's that's the danger that our faith uh, becomes uh, yes, it becomes more complex. We're able to navigate more easily uh, secular understandings, but at the same time. You know, we run uh, square into some problems, you know, in our way of understanding scripture. Hmm. Is the creation narrative uh, uh, inspired and inerrant the way that we understand it? Hmm. Or is it simply a myth that, like all myths, illustrate certain truths hmm. that we can go from there? And if that is the case with uh, the creation story, well, uh, what about other narratives hmm. in scripture? The age of the patriarchs or, you know, the, the uh, uh, Abraham's giving you know, uh, and Sarah giving birth to Isaac at the age right. of 100 years and so on and so forth. So in other words, you know, it, I think what, what it poses as, as we enter into deeper intellectual inquiry and we really get into those deeper levels of um, intellectual research and, and reflection, we do end up running some dangers as well. That's and right. our faith it becomes richer and so on. But at the same time, it really, it's just, there's no way I think to avoid the, the perils also of uh, listening to that siren song mm -hmm. as well. It, it's, uh, so um, I, I'm sure that also that, that poses some, some concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, there must be some dialogue even in the faculty, I'm sure. There may be uh, different uh, 
spectra of There's a uh, spectrum of belief. perspectives, that's uh, right. Belief. So even on issues of human origins uh, on our faculty, there's a spectrum of mm -hmm. beliefs. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. The, the key thing for me, Roberto, is how do we remain really faithful to our core Christian convictions while also, while also open enough to be mm -hmm. in conversation with folks who don't hold those positions. Mm -hmm. and, and Gordon is better situated than virtually every other Christian college in the country because of where we're located. Boston is a pretty secular environment, and Gordon has had to figure out how to be faithful in that context for 30, 40, 50 years, uh, long before other institutions were confronting that particular issue. And, and as president, it's my job to try and make sure that we hold fast to the core essentials of our mm -hmm. faith, while also having a wideness of both grace and understanding on issues where there is uh, disagreement even within the Christian community.